Hudson Institute, senior fellow, Atlas Organization, founder and author of China's Vision of Victory, Jonathan D.T. Ward. Jonathan, is this a fresh sign of China's aggression towards Taiwan? Because have we really seen them do these types of drills in this serious of a fashion around the island of Taiwan? Hi, Cheryl. Well, look, it's it's not a fresh thing in that sense. It's actually very similar to the drills that they performed after Nancy Pelosi's visit in um, summer of 2022. So in a way, it's sort of surprising we haven't seen anything of this scale since then. But here it is. Um, I mean, they're doing this in part in response, or so they say, to the inauguration of the new Taiwanese president, William Lai. Um, but bottom line, I mean, they've encircled the island. They're going around not just from in the Taiwan Strait on the western side, but around um, in the Philippine Sea on the eastern side of the island. And then the thing that they've done that they haven't done in the past is while simultaneously encircling the island, they also are carrying out exercises around the offshore islands, Jinmen and Matsu, which were the centerpieces of Taiwan Strait's crises in the, in the Cold War era. So, you know, at this point, they're going pretty full bore on all the different flashpoints in the Taiwan Straits. And, you know, they're escalating their rhetoric as well. I mean, the foreign ministry, I mean, imagine this, it's the official spokesman of the foreign ministry said that Taiwan independence forces will be left with their heads broken and blood flowing after colliding against the trend of China achieving complete unification. So we're back to the Xi Jinping sort of rhetoric about breaking heads and bloody heads and these sort of, you know, horrible things that the party says. So, um, and meanwhile, Indo-Pacific Command has told us, I think, very clearly and very repeatedly um, that China is preparing to be capable of invading Taiwan, you know, executing a successful invasion by 2027. So that's now not too far off. I mean, they've built the, the force structure to do this. I mean, they've ramped up their military in quite a powerful way. Their, um, you know, relationship with Putin, I think, also enables them to have um, really a global approach to military aggression. And uh, we need to get very busy supplying the Taiwanese with what they need. There's apparently a large backlog of missiles that they need. I mean, we have not apparently sent them the harpoon missiles that they um, require and just other uh, kit that's necessary in the Pacific. So there's a lot of work to be done, and this flashpoint is only be going to become more important. Well, that rhetoric, I think, is what, what I mean, I've covered China for 20 years and, as a journalist, and to see that type of rhetoric, it's, it's just gotten so abrasive, which I think shows yeah. the arrogance like never before from Xi Jinping, who, remember, was just over in Europe meeting with Emmanuel Macron, uh, you know, me meeting with their, you know, for economic partnerships. Uh, and let's get to the economics of this, because the, the Europe trip for Xi Jinping was about cars. And I want to ask you about Elon Musk, uh, because he is now saying he opposes U.S. tariffs on Chinese electric vehicles. Here's what he said specifically. Things that inhibit freedom of exchange or distort the market are not good. Tesla competes quite well in the market in China with no tariffs and no deferential support. So President Biden announced tariffs on 18 billion worth of Chinese imports last week. He was decided to raise tariffs on Chinese EVs from 25% to 100%. Obviously, Elon Musk is saying, uh-oh, there's gonna be retaliation and I'm gonna suffer for it because I'm trying to sell my cars in China. And he's not wrong in that he does have success in China selling Tesla vehicles. Do you think that that is something that, that Musk needs to be worried about? And do you think the Chinese would do this? Look, I think um, Elon Musk is in a lot of trouble in China. I mean, Tesla is a, is a company that has, I think, pretty unmitigated China exposure. And uh, the right thing at this point, in my view, is for uh, Wall Street analysts and those holding stock to look at China exposure from American corporations is pure risk. I mean, this is not opportunity. So, you know, Tesla, like Apple, has uh, enormous revenue exposure uh, to China. And if one reads the 10K, you can see he doesn't even own his factory in Shanghai. He rents it, leases it from the Communist Party of China, and it's uh, there is a capital expenditure minimum and a revenue minimum. And when he meets those, he continues to lease it on a 50-year basis. So, um, you know, and they sell uh, uh, the, the second, you know, right after the United States, their highest sales are in China. And I think he was calling for uh, tariffs um, or protection and basically, you know, last year about um, at the end of 2023 saying that I'm going to be in a lot of trouble because we're mm -hmm. uh, the competition yeah. that we're getting on in, in the China market. And essentially Absolutely. what they did was um, the, the intellectual property, anything that's produced in China is not protected and any good CEO so, and he's knows worried that. About so that they essentially, too. And he's worried about that too, Jonathan. Well, now hey, they I have competitors it, 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 he has to Cheryl, be. I don't that, have, that are going to beat them worldwide right. you know, I, in a lot of ways. I don't so. have a lot of time with you, but I do want to get John Mates is on set with me and he's got a question for you, so I'd like to get him in. Okay. John, go ahead. Yeah, Jonathan, we've seen a lot of escalation on the TikTok front 
and uh, allegations of Chinese propaganda there. How does that play into both their economic as well as kind of geopolitical strategy, especially with regards to Taiwan? Is that a place for propaganda for them? Uh, TikTok. Well, I mean, TikTok is really a propagandist tool, you know, principally in the United States. I mean, if you've got half of our population, the principal news source for Americans under 30, I mean, they're able to pump um, stuff that ultimately would be very pro-regime. I mean, you could imagine a, an attack on Taiwan and then um, TikTok and ByteDance blasting out a whole lot of uh, information saying that Taiwan belongs to China or something like that. And, you know, it's so, so, so I think that's more of a propaganda tool, but uh, the Communist Party takes a pretty broad spectrum approach to strategy. I mean, they have a quite a comprehensive uh, approach to all of this. So, so I think we know at this point how TikTok fits into that. And, um, you know, it's not really an economic tool so much as a propaganda and espionage tool. Well, and that's why you've got bipartisan support in this country to either, they either need to be sold off or shut down in the United States. Uh, real quick for you, Ron, just got a minute here, but Treasury Secretary Yellen is calling on G7 countries to present this united front against China's industrial overcapacity. Um, she's going to be meeting with the alliance's finance ministers in Italy. Here's what she said yesterday. Real quick reaction from you after this. I think... Many countries share a concern over the broad macroeconomic and industrial strategy that China is pursuing. I'm simply saying not, not that all these countries need to carefully coordinate their policies, but we need to stand together and send a unified message to China so they understand it's not one, just one country that feels this way but that they face a wall of opposition to the strategy that they're, that they're pursuing. Jonathan, your thoughts? Sure. Well, wall of opposition is certainly the right way to do this. I mean, it's take it Janet Yellen three and a half years, but she finally seems to understand uh, how this works, what this is about, and the need to go hard on China yeah. in terms of economic competition. She said the, the opposite for years now, but good to see it coming around. Finally, after she went to China and, you know, ate mushrooms and hung out. Right. Anyway, Maybe that uh, <laughs> and there was that. Uh, Jonathan D.T. Ward, thank you so much. Great to see you and have a great uh, holiday weekend.